Alright everybody, welcome to Hooligans Underground. Welcome to the standing room. Happy Tuesday. Good to see y'all. Good to have y'all. Y'all ready for some jokes? Hell yeah. I want to hear about Thibodeau. And, uh, what's his name? Yeah, I'm ready Thibodeau. to hear y'all's jokes. But I'm going to say when we get it started. Boudreau, 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 Boudreau. Yeah, I know. You can't, well, okay, you ever notice? You ever notice how fake? You ever notice how fake that uh, Nick's accent is? You know, yeah, fake. He yeah. Talk, he says, totally he fake, bro. Louisiana. I'm like, really Louisiana. from New York. You don't say Louisiana. <laughs> I, got this, I got this fake New Orleans accent. This is a yeah. fool too. He's just fake as shit, you know. You, you know, crazy you know, ass. Well, you know, ass your New York accent could use some. New York. New York. Yeah. York. yeah. Hi, Lone. Good to see you here. Yeah. I think Lone's a new Lone's a newbie. So welcome, Lone. Oh, hey, Lone. Welcome Any in. Newbie, any newbies come in? Let them go up first. Let them go first, unless. Well, they gotta want to come up, right? Unless they don't want to. Let yeah. them do what they want. We don't want oh, to. We want you newbies. Uh, All right, y'all. Okay, let's yeah. get three, two, one, go. Boudreau, Marie, and that little boy they call Tofield. <laughs> they all decided to go down to the big city, oh, New Orleans. Oh. Now it was their first time going there. Now when they got there, they was in awe of everything they saw. They had never seen so many tall buildings in their entire lives. <sighs> now they walked onto one of the buildings or into one of the buildings, and was just looking around. And Marie, she suddenly had to go to the ladies' room. Uh -oh. Now, she asked for directions and walked off to find it. Now, Boudreau and, and Tofield, also known as uh, Little T, they was just waiting. They saw these two big silver doors, and it was just slide open and slide closed. Amazing. <laughs> now, and they also saw people going through those doors. Now, one particularly homely looking lady, she walked through them doors, and after they closed, they noticed the numbers over the doors changed. One, two, three, four. About a minute later, they saw the numbers changing again. Four, oh. three, two, one. Oh. And when the doors opened, what had to be the most beautiful lady in the world came out from behind them big old silver doors. Hmm. Now, Boudreaux and Tofield's mouths fell open when they saw that lady. And Boudreaux, he, rega he regained his control. He tells little Tofield, he says, Quick, boy, go find your mama. We got to get her to walk through them doors. <laughs> Magic doors of youth, y'all. It's like the the fountain of youth. <laughs> That's too funny. All right, another quickie. I know you can hear me. I know you can hear me. I know you can hear me. That's terrible. That's just terrible. That's I can barely hear you, Randy. I barely hear turn you, turn you too. You I turned you up. You must have stepped away from your microphone. Yeah. Good thing. <laughs> Oh, burn. Okay, next. <laughs> All right, y'all. Here's a little one. A short one. Then we'll get the real comedians up there. <laughs> now, Boudreaux was down at the Bayou Ball last Saturday, and he was getting pretty damn sauced up. Air Bear came in and saw him sitting there looking real down and out. Air Bear asked Boudreaux, he said, what's the matter, my friend? Boudreaux said, man, Air Bear. My wife, Marie, she done ran away with my best friend, Thibodeau. Aww. I am so sad. I am sure going to miss that, Thibodeau. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, I think we got a sports update. Even though it ain't football no more, I think Boston got an update to give us. So now let's everybody season. welcome up Boston. Yay, Boston! It's now Boston. Boston. Yeah. 
<laughs> Yay! Yesterday uh, myself this off yesterday. I'm his score, Uncle. Give him hell, man. Give him hell. Who did they lose to? The New Yorkers. The other thing is, my favorite player got ejected yesterday in the fourth quarter. Oh, man. On the internet, but we're putting the Cavaliers tomorrow at 7 30. Go Celtics! Go Celtics! Go Celtics! Alright, Boston, thank you, bro. Hey, Boston! Alright, everybody, big game. Hey, Boston. Thank you. All right, fellas. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We is updated. We is updated. We is. We is. We is. All right. I'm just gonna do one. Okay. And then we'll do open mic again. All right. Because uh, Boston sports update. I guess because it ain't NFL football season no more. It was kind of quick. Or college basketball. Yeah. Football. All right, we want to get down at the moment for a while. while. You're you know, down to work. Uh, okay. You know what? You know what? Pro ball is garbage. You know why? When that was okay, we're well, done jokes now. All right, Randy, let's not do it. Let's not go there. We're doing jokes now. Well, we're in. All right, y'all. Boudreaux is down at the Montgomery Wards. Wow. Down at the Northgate Mall. Not travel. All right. That ought to tell you how long ago that was. That's a long time. Monkey Wars has been gone for a long time ago. <laughs> anyway, he was looking at the hand saws. Now the salesman came up and he asked him if he could help. Boudreau said he had a lot of trees to cut down and he needed a new saw. Now the salesman began to extol the virtues and advantages of the brand new Husqvarna Chainsaw with a 42 inch blade. Oh, sweet. Told Boudreaux that he can hey. cut them trees down fast. Mm. Super fast, yeah. Like four or five of them in an hour. Wow. Now Boudreaux bought that saw and he left. Only he returned two days later telling that salesman that this was the slowest saw he had ever heard <laughs> and that he wanted his money back. <laughs> Now the I salesman mean, was, was the <laughs> he was perplexed. He said, let me check out this dang thing. And he proceeded to set the choke and he pumped that little plastic bulb. And just as he had told Boudreaux to do, he pulled that string and bah, 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 bah. they cranked right up. And Boudreaux, surprised, he jumped back about three feet, looked at that salesman, said, what the hell is that noise? <laughs> <laughs> Thought he had him one of them fancy, fancy hand saws, y'all. Some ass cage. I knew that was a good one. I can imagine him trying to use that like a military whip. Holy shit. <laughs> that thing was heavy, too. You imagine know, cutting <laughs> down a tree like that? It's equally oh, cut one way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. All right. Oh, I'm happy. Open oh. mic. <laughs> For the first person, this ain't going next. We got big link. All right, Grease is on the move. Yeah, Grease is on the move. So, everybody, get a big hand. Yay, Grease is on the move. I'm not in Oh, fucking standing. No, I have Lander Bridges on. I just don't think I have my mic on. There we go. Great shoes, though. Hey, great, helps. great shoes. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hey, why not? Um, hey, well, why not? Why not? Hey, why? Better wait than never. Better wait than never. Yeah. Yes. Why we mind? Why we mind? Why we? Why we? Why we, we. So. Yeah. Does everybody know what tomorrow is? Yeah. Yeah. After today. Wednesday. What? March 1st. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yay. So yes, what is the soldier's oh, yes. least favorite day? What is what? A soldier's least favorite, least favorite day. day. Oh. March 4th. 
March 4th! Oh, oh, go die, young man. Go die, young man. Can't yeah, say that I blame him. No. Oh, Lord. Hey, why? Hey. And, and, and why? Why are so many people all tired on April 1st? Because they just finished a 31-day march. Wow! Oh, oh man, you're oh, good! The other day I was I was talking to my cousin and I you know I I, I know she's my cousin but I don't know everything about her so I said well when's your birthday and she said March first so I walked around the room and I asked her again uh, uh. that's right that's right that's right <laughs> That, that's a tribute to uh, Happy because she's here as, as a matronette. So ah, nice. don't remind March. me. Yeah. Don't, don't, so, even talk, don't even talk about that. <laughs> what is Irish and comes out during March? Mm. Super happy fun Patrick. time. <laughs> Patio furniture. Wait, what? Oh! Are you doing? Uh, Patty uh, O Furniture. <laughs> <laughs> not cow Patio <laughs> Furniture. <laughs> yeah, no, not here. Maybe, maybe late April. Maybe, 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 maybe in South Carolina. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> and why are babies born on March 31st, excuse me, the easiest to prank on April Fool's Day? Why is that? Because, because they, they were, were literally, literally born, born yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> oh! Oh! Uh, uh, <laughs> now, um, has it, 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 everyone here aware of, you know, beware of the Ides of March? Does everyone yeah. know really what that means? Yes, Julius Caesar yeah. was stabbed oh, yeah. to death. Yes, Julius Caesar was assassinated, exactly. And, and there was, was a, pl a play, you know, a Shakespearean play, um, his best friend Brutus. Brutus. Um, actually, the reason Caesar was assassinated was because he was getting too big for his britches, and he fancied himself the emperor, and all the Usually that's what happened. senators, um, you know, got into a group, and Brutus agreed. And so, so power, one of the sayings out. was, you know, et tu, Brute, which in Latin means even you, Brutus. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Brutus. So, and they were all jealous because they betrayed nail Cleopatra, and they didn't. <laughs> mm. So to celebrate the Ides of March with a donut, in fact, eat two, Brute. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's a long way to get to that joke, oh, isn't it? I ate two, Boutet. Uh -huh. <laughs> Eat two, Boutet. We know uh, he's March... a large man <laughs> yeah. of great circumference. On March 10, 1876, Alexander Graham Bell oh, made the first telephone call. And, and moments, moments later, later, he learned, learned his auto warranty had expired. How do we do the first <laughs> damn call? <laughs> Your warranty is expired. Uh, and the call was from India. Yeah. March 26th <laughs> is yeah, Epilepsy yeah. Awareness yeah. Day. So, so I, I want you to all get out, out there and seize the day. day. Oh, wow. oh, oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh. And what, what marsh flowers grow on faces? Wait, what? Um, I don't know. March flowers. Wait, what? What marsh flowers grow on faces? Tulips. March flowers. Tulips. Oh, that's clever. I totally missed that one. I, I can't. March 30th I is. It. March 30th. Two lips. Two lips. They grow on, on your, your face. face. It's a flower. It grows, it grows on, on your face. face. Oh, two lips. Okay. Oh, no. I oh, know. on your face. All right. Okay. Turn me up. On your face. Turn me up, dead man. Uh, March 30, 30th is World Bipolar Day. And I, I don't know how I really feel about that. Oh. <laughs> 
Boston's the boss. I'm I'm on notice. Somebody got to be the boss. Yeah, okay. see my new name, right now, Jason Tanner Ben forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Boudreaux was sitting down watching TV. He was oh. watching the late news. Now he hears Marie screaming right. in the bedroom. Oh. He runs in there just in time to see a naked man jumping out the window. Uh oh. And he asks Marie, Cher, what the hell happened? And Marie tells him, said, Boudreaux, that man jumped in bed with me, and he did the nasty to me twice. Woo! Oh! I said, twice? Damn, Marie, how come you didn't scream when he was hitting you on you the first time? <laughs> he says, Boudreaux, I thought it was you. Oh! So he started yeah. the second time. <laughs> I guess oh, yeah, hit and run one, one and done kind of a guy, y'all. <laughs> one and done. One and done. <laughs> oh, God, poor Bujo. <laughs> poor Marie. <laughs> Boudreaux got his, y'all. I guess. <laughs> All right, speaking of Boudreaux and Marie, now, the other night, Boudreaux and Marie were getting ready for bed. And Marie, she takes off all her clothes, <gasps> lays on the bed, and she spreads out. Woo! She looks over at Boudreaux, and with a soft, sultry voice, she says, You know what I want, right, Boudreaux? Boudreaux looks at her, and he says, Yeah. I guess that means you want the whole bed for yourself tonight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, once again, open mic. Rumor has it, Wyvern is coming up here. Oh, All right, right. I guess I Everybody can. Everybody. Oh, 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 buddy, I, I can sit on a table. Oh, buddy. Yay! These are probably I all these. The orange cloud. Yeah, uh, may am I an orange cloud? Oh, really? I feel, oh, I, oh man! Yeah, I'm so I sorry. If I can't fix that. Oh, I don't know. But anyway, well, I'm offering Johnny a teleport because he said hello. All right. So this guy's in a VIP airport lounge en route to Seattle. He's in a meeting with a really important client who's also going to fly to Seattle, but she's running late. Well, while he's waiting, he notices Bill Gates sitting in a chair enjoying a cognac. Uh -oh. Being a forward type, the guy approaches Bill Gates and introduces himself. He says to Gates he's conducting some very important business, and he'd really, really appreciate it if Gates would throw a quick hello Paul at him while he's with his client to make it look real good, you know? And Gates agrees. So 10 minutes later, while he's conversing with his client, he feels a tap on his shoulder, and it's Bill Gates. The man turns around and looks up at him, and Bill Gates says, Hey, Paul, what's happening? And the guy says, Piss off, Bill. I'm in a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty crappy. Well, Bill Gates deserved that, I think. Huh? Did you, did you pay for that copy of Windows? <laughs> <laughs> 
This little business owner's got two employees, just two, Jack and Jill. Business oh. is really bad. The business owner's got to lay one of them off, but he's having a hard time deciding which one he's going to let go. So he decides the first one to leave for lunch is the one he'll lay off, but both of them stay, and they eat at their desks. Well, then he says, well, the first one to leave for work at the end of the day, that's who I'll fire. And they both got up, and they were leaving at the same time, so he's got to let one of them go. Which one? So he decides on Jill. And he walks over to Jill's car. She's about to get in. He says, Jill, listen, I'm trying to decide whether to lay you or jack off. What do you think? And Jill says, you better jack off. I'm already late for an appointment. <laughs> well, Smith, Smith goes to see his supervisor in the front office. He says, boss, we're doing real heavy house cleaning at the home tomorrow. My wife really needs me to help with the attic and the garage, moving and hauling stuff off. The boss says, look, we're really short-handed, Smith. I can't give you the day off. Smith says, thanks a lot, boss. I knew I could count on you. <laughs> Who the hell wants to move all that shit, right? Right. Four people are there in the final stages of interviewing for a prestigious job. The managing director decides to call him in one by one and ask him a question. The first applicant's called in, and the managing director says, What is the fastest thing in the world? And the applicant thinks for a minute and says, Well, that would have to be a thought. Why do you say that? The director asks. Well, a thought takes no time at all. It's in your mind in an instant and then gone again. Hmm, very good. Thank you. Next the same questions posed to the second applicant. What's the fastest thing in the world? She pauses and she says, Well, it would have to be a blink. Why? asked the managing director. Well, because you don't even think about a blink. It's just a reflex. You just do it in an instant. The managing director thanks her and calls in the next person. Well, the third applicant asks, What's the fastest thing in the world? After hesitating a brief moment, he says, I'd have to say electricity. Well, why? Well, because a man can flip a switch and immediately feed, feed, and feed, feed away. A light will go on somewhere. Okay, that's very good, says the managing director. And then the final applicant is called in, and he's asked, what's the fastest thing in the world? And he says, well, hell, that's easy. Have to be diarrhea. <laughs> Rather stunned, the managing director says, why do you say that? The guy says, well, last night after dinner I was lying in my bed and I got the worst stomach cramps and before I could think, blink, or even turn on the lights. <laughs> and that's mine for the night, boys and girls. That was good, yeah. Oh. We, 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 we got some new people, you said, Nick. We got new people? Nude. Nude or new? Nude or new? I want to look around the room here and see what's happening. <laughs> oh, I wanted nude people. Can we get some nude ones in here, too? Maybe? No. no. You first. Oh, we'd have to throw, like, a special event. Yeah. Put up the contest board. <laughs> you can do it. You go first, why not? <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, it's pretty easy for me with this new Matreya body that I am getting used to. I, I have been nude multiple times in front of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Well, we're glad Lona's here. I hope she's having a good time. Why don't you put it in the paper? You're looking good. Well, thank you. I'm a goddess, by the way. We like voyeurs, too. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Hey, Lone. We're glad you're here. Hope you're having a good time. Yeah, Hello, it. Lone. I didn't spell that correctly or pronounce it correctly, but you know what I mean. Right, you don't care if you come in your curlers and PJs. No, oh, pearl, curlers and PJs is good. Yeah, it is. Come. Hell yeah. Back. All right, I'm ready for Boudreaux. What's going on with Boudreaux? Well, is he going to have some work? was here just last week or the week before last. I think she was. If you want the fat lady in curlers and a bathrobe, I can do that for you. 
Nah, we didn't say fat. <laughs> Dick. Dick okay. Alright. Boudreaux and Thibodeau. Y'all, did y'all know that they were some of the biggest baseball fans in America? No, I thought Boston was. Especially now that football season's over. It's all baseball, y'all. Now, for their entire adult lives, they discussed baseball history, all went along, and they kept up with every score, every statistic, all season long. Wow. They went to 60 games a year. They even agreed that whoever died first would try to come back and tell the other one <coughs> that it was baseball up in heaven. Mm. Now, one summer night, Boudreau died. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not again. After watching a baseball game. <laughs> he died happy. Uh-huh. Now, a few nights later, Thibodeau awoke to the sound of Boudreau's voice. Boudreau, is that you? Thibodeau asks. Yup, it's me. This is unbelievable, exclaimed Thibodeau. So tell me, is there baseball up there in heaven? Boudreau said, well, I got some good news and some bad news for you, Tib. Mm -hmm. Which one you want to hear first? Thibodeau says, well, of course, tell me the good news. All right, well, Good news is that, yes, sir, there definitely is baseball up here in heaven. That's <laughs> wonderful, says Boudreau. No, it says Thibodeau. I don't forget. Anyway, <laughs> possible <laughs> bad news. Boudreau said, well, the bad news is that you pitching first up tomorrow night. That that is bad good news. <laughs> good news, little bad news. <laughs> All right, open mic, Tom. I'll get up there. Fiddler. Yay, right. Fiddler, Fiddler. 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 All right, everybody. Yay, Fiddler. Big warm welcome for Fiddler. Yay, Yay Fiddler. Fiddler. Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to see you. I haven't seen you very much, Cassie. I haven't seen you very much. Yeah. Yeah, glad you could come here. <laughs> I don't Freaking wildcat. Hello. Ah! <laughs> Sorry. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we hear yes, you sir. fine. Oh, good, good. You do now. How's everyone doing? Oh, oh, that's great, man. Good. We're having a blast. I got some dumb jokes as usual. Uh, did you know that going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than standing in your garage makes you a car? <laughs> oh, that's clever. True, very true. Very, clever. Yeah. very true, yeah. And you know, it's never a good idea to keep both feet firmly on the ground. You'll always have trouble putting on your pants. <laughs> Walking to. Yep. Change is inevitable except from a vending machine. That's true. <laughs> Why does someone believe you when you say there are four billion stars, but they always check when you say the pain is wet? Uh, how much know. paint is on my clothes? Yeah, a lot. This is what you say to someone that you don't really care for. You say, the last thing I want to do is hurt you, but it's still on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that there's three kinds of people? Those who can count and those who can't? If Walmart is lowering prices every day, why isn't anything in the store free yet? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, right? Because they lie. Why? I have all the money I'll ever need if I die by 3 p.m. tomorrow. 
<laughs> oh, right. Oh, yeah. I died before the first and rinse do. <laughs> this is true. A TV can insult your intelligence, but nothing rubs it in like a computer. Oh, <laughs> rubs it in. <laughs> Okay. This is Sorry. these are two facts. The older I get, the earlier it gets late. That's true. Uh, Women rarely yeah. admit their age and men rarely act it. That's true. <laughs> I'm so old that my first car was a covered wagon. That's true, too. <laughs> <laughs> a wise man remembers a woman's birthday, but he never her age. Oh, oh yeah. That, that is <clears throat> Very that true. Is true as shit. And I am so old, I can remember when emojis were actually called hieroglyphics. <laughs> Thinkerer, you and thinkerer. You know, yeah. That's a good point. You know, that's an actual truth that you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> my abacus is still in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And and my last one is I'd like to say I'm aging like fine wine, but in my case, it's more like a fine banana. Oh! <laughs> oh, <laughs> and that's what I got for oh, me. All right, Fiddler. Oh, Hillary's here. Hello, Hillary. Hello, Hillary. Hello, Hillary. Come stand over here next to me so I can cuddle you. Hi, Hillary. Hillary, hello. Hillary. Hey, Randy, a hello would have been suffice. Well, I can't help it. Uh, well, we're gonna make you. Just keep the room between you <laughs> Yeah, don't do anything in here. Okay, save it for later. We don't need to clean the floor. <laughs> that floor is filthy, y'all. That's why we <laughs> keep the oh, lights turned yeah. down so low. Between Hillary, got no cleaning happy, happy, happy Hillary here. <laughs> between the two. Ah, y'all, Boudreau. Boudreau. Boudreau went out one night. And he had a little bit too much to drink. Mm -hmm. Now, as he staggered home, he put his empty bottles of whiskey in his back pocket. Now, walking up the steps to his house, he trips and fell down and oh. broke both of them bottles. Oh. Now, he cut himself pretty bad. Oh, no. There, yeah. Now, he done got inside and looking at his rear end in the mirror, proceeds... <laughs> Put some band-aids on all them cuts. <laughs> the next morning, his lovely wife Marie said, Boudreau, I see you came home drunk again last night. He said, Marie, chef, what makes you think that? He says, Because you put band-aids all over the damn mirror. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, I would prove it. OMG. All right. One day, a traveling salesman, and he stopped by Boudreaux's house, and he noticed a sign that says, Danger, beware of the dog. And that sign was posted right there on the front gate. Inside the gate, he noticed a harmless appearing old hound dog asleep on the path leading up to the house. He saw Boudreaux sitting on the front porch and he said, he hollered, he hollered at Boudreaux, he said, is that dog, is that dog folks are supposed to be afraid of? <laughs> yup, said Boudreaux. Uh -oh. That'd be him. Now the salesman, he couldn't help but be amused. That certainly don't look like a dangerous dog to me. He was chuckling when he said that. Why in the world do you post a sign? Because, Boudreaux said, before I posted that sign, everybody kept tripping over him. 
Find out what Pinocchio did with his nose. Pinocchio <laughs> does with that nose. Yeah. Hope you feel better, uh, happy. Let me get real. Feel doing. better, happy. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks for coming along. Glad you could be here. She ain't going to bed. She's going. She's going through a job. A second life. That's why I, I wanted her to send me a TP so I go there and check up on her. Good night. Well, I want. Good night, Cassie. Do you know? Hey, Cassie. Aww. Hey, Cassie. Welcome in. Cassie, I can tell a couple more. I got a couple more. Okay. Oh, hey, you can do some more. Did you know you Is Cassie telling some? No, 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 no. I just popped in because I finished sailing. So I thought, oh. well, I'll go see if anyone's there. Are we here? All right, I'm ready. Well, I'm tell a couple way. more. I'm gonna tell a couple, a couple of more because uh, I don't want it to end 20 minutes before the end or 15 or whatever. No, 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 no. Yeah. I got, I got, a, I got a whole bunch of shit I could do. Oh well, how? Why didn't you speak up? You want me to get off? I will. No, no. Uh, I didn't see you. I'll just do. I'll just do one. I'll do one, and then you come up. All right, the Queen of England and George W. Bush are riding in the royal carriage down Pall Mall, chatting politely, and one horse breaks wind. The smell is horrid. Both the Queen and the President Bush are embarrassed, too embarrassed to say anything, till the Queen has to break the awkward silence, and she says, Oh, Mr. President, I'm so terribly sorry. As you now realize, there are some things over which even the Queen of England has no control. And really graciously, President Bush says, Oh, don't think anything of it, Your Majesty. If you had not said anything, I wouldn't have thought, I would have thought it was the horse. <laughs> All right, so, Randy, if you have some stuff, come on up, buddy. I've got some. All right, got some. Randy's coming up. Let's everybody welcome him. Hey, Randy. He just did. He told you to get up there. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Well, being Superman, you sure got terrible hearing. Yeah. I know super hearing there. That's true. You got super talking. (laughs) A man is talking, too, yeah, yeah. The ears and the mouth. Oh, You're supposed to see through walls and hear everything. I don't know what's so, wrong with that, Superman. You know. I think it's Superman, not Superman. It could be. Well, you know, I'm I'm Superman. ruining his I'm ruining his rep. I'm ruining his street cred right now. You know that, right? Now the horse did that. <laughs> oh, <bro. laughs> All right, let me find my here it is. Once upon a time. I was out flying and I see Wonder Woman naked on a rooftop with her legs wide open and moaning in delight. And I think to myself that I'm faster than a speeding bullet and I could do my business with her and fly off before she knows what happened. She toys with the idea and decides to go for it. I swoop down and fuck her with lightning thrust and zooms off in a flash whole event lasts less than a second. As soon as I'm gone, Wonder Woman gasps, sits up and yells, what the hell was that? I don't know, but my ass hurts like hell, replies the invisible man. Oh my lord, oh my lord. But I told that once before, I don't know. Wasn't you Superman last week? I don't know, I I can't remember. Yeah. Was I? I, I? I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying. Did you I'm have dementia to... last week? Then I be Superman. Superman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. 
pretty much you got it right, man. I'm I'm, I'm half three quarters in the bag, and I don't care. Well, I'll be sure. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, Mike. Exercise. Mike, check, Mike, check, Mike, check. Okay. Once upon a time, the Superman girl. challenges. What? Girl. You don't want me to go? You want me to keep the going? No. Your mic's on. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Once upon a time, Superman challenges the Flash to a race. You will never beat me, said the Flash. But I guess you can let you try. And they agree from east to run from east coast to the west coast of the U.S. Oh. The race begins and Superman runs as fast as he can. And he puts absorbing absolutely everything he's got into it. But when he gets to the west coast, he sees the free. Wait a minute. Did I tell these last week? <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, you did. Oh, fuck. Oh, Jesus. All right. Well, that's why I said Superman. Yeah, no kidding. All right. You know what? Let me try to find out. Yeah, but I wasn't uh, here last week, so I haven't heard them. Okay. Well, well, you do I am so, I am so useless. I, I'm, I'm, I'm useless, you know. I, I, it's, it's the, I wasn't here last week either. It's the kryptonite. Yeah. It's, the kryptonite. Right. It's, it's, it's the kryptonite. It's the kryptonite. It's the kryptonite. It's not... <laughs> My best friend, you know that. Oh, uh, uh, oh, why do I live in the fortress of solitude? Well, you put yourself in there. Because it's just the ice. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> As a, you know, there's only two people in the world that are allowed to laugh at their own jokes. It's Red Skelton and me, because nobody can beat me up unless they have a kryptonite. <laughs> okay. no. True story. Um, 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 when people see Superman, that's me, Flying, they always ask, is it a bird? Is it a plane? Why can't they recognize him? Uh, because in disguise? Get it? Disguise? He's in disguise. Like, <laughs> disguise. In disguise. Oh, he's a black disguise. Superman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Get it. Okay. You people, you know, you know, you 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 are right for humans, you know. Okay. Um, do you know why I never had a social life? Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> but but yeah, but, but because Clark can't. Clark can't. Clark can't. 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 Oh. Can't. Clark, oh. Clark, Clark can't. Clark can't. Oh. Clark can't. Oh. I hope you built the stage drawing. Uh, did you, <laughs> did you guys hear about the nun with superpowers? When she yeah. fly, flies over, people say, "It's a bird. It's a plane. It's it's Superman." No, it's none of the above. Oh, <laughs> oh you did it. Yeah. <clears throat> Wait, wait, wait a minute. Let me get my bearings here. All right. Wait. Is this boat moving or what? I wait, what's going on? All right. Uh, uh, okay. Superman is flying across town when we spots Wonder Woman laying on a roof. And we already told that one. What the hell? What the hell is going on? I want the jokes that. Pink kryptonite turns Superman gay. What does Thor use? The Bifrost. <laughs> <clears throat> Oops, sorry. I went into Joker mode. Oh. Yeah, I'll say that was the Joker laugh. 
Oh, oh, oh yes, I can. You know who put the kryptonite in your pants? Oh. Yeah, I think you oh. put your own kryptonite oh. in your pants. Why can't Superman? Why can Superman beat Dracula? Because he's in the kryptonite. Into kryptonite? Into kryptonite. In the kryptonite. Okay, right, wait a minute. Oh, oh, excuse me. Oh, oh. Did you leave a bucket up here? I gotta throw up. No, I'll, I'll hold it. I'll throw up. I'll I think it. you should keep a little yeah. wastebasket near your computer there, baby. I hope. I hope. I hope. Why? Why? If I saw a man in a suit jump in a phone booth and then Superman jump out, I'd be like, holy shit, a fucking phone booth? <laughs> All right. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You know what? I don't, I don't even get that myself because... I do it so fast, I don't even need a phone booth anymore. <laughs> the last time you saw a phone booth, really. I'm so glad you're videotaping this, Sam. Well, I mean, oh, but seriously. There, uh, uh, <coughs> I, 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 hope, I hope you are. I'm doing my best. I'm trying. All right, once, <laughs> once upon a time, Snow White and Superman and Pinocchio. Pinocchio were wa walking in the city. And they see a house with a sign on it that says, A World's Prettiest Woman Contest. So Snow White goes in and comes back out all happy, and Tiara on her head is a big winner. And they keep walking, they see a gym with the signs of World's Strongest Man Contest. And of course, I go in and I come back out as a winner with a trophy in my hand, smiling. And they, we keep walking and they see a house with a sign, World's Greatest Liar Contest. <laughs> Pinocchio goes in, comes out, all beaten and torn, with a tear in his eye. Who the fuck is Donald Trump? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait! I'm a Trumpster all the way. Superman supports Republicans and stuff. All right, wait. wait. Oh God, put the mic up straight. All right. Oh. Um, What's the difference between Bloods and Superman? One gets killed by Kryptonite, and the other gets killed by Crips tonight. Crips, the Crips, the Crips, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, but, uh, well, does Superman have at the top of his stairs a superhero landing? Yeah, that's for those of you who watch The Boys on TV. <laughs> you know, once, once my friend Boudreaux said to me, do, do you want to hear a really good Batman impression? I said, go on. And he shouted, not the kryptonite. And I said, wait, that's Superman. He said, yeah, thanks, man. I've been practicing a lot. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't like kryptonite jokes, and I especially don't like pink kryptonite. Oh, all right. The pilot, here's an airplane joke. The pilot comes on the speaker. Pilot, now that we are on the air, I figured I'd lighten it up with a joke. Knock, knock. Passengers all say, who's there? And the pilot says, Superman. The passengers say, Superman who? The pilot says, you're at 40,000 feet. It's either me or really on unlucky baggage handler now. Open up. 
I don't get it. I fucked that one up. I guess so. I yeah, I guess you did. Yeah, I'm sorry. Just a little. You know, bit. I, you, when we tried it again, I I'm kind of lost. Try one more time. I do no, try it no. again. I just did. the Superman two movie <clears throat> and a documentary about the moon landing has accidentally been scheduled at the same time for the lunar background part of the movie lot. They argued about who should get to use it first, but then they remembered Needle before Zod. <laughs> so what, what type of cryptocy will Superman never accept? Cryptocurrency. <laughs> you, uh, you, you want more or you want me to get off the stage? Uh, let me come up there and wrap it up, Randy. Okay. Uh, thanks, yeah. Randy. Awesome job. I do my best to, to, to get uh, over here right around the corner here. Oh, God. Uh, what the hell? Somebody brought in somebody brought in yellow kryptonite. I know it. I thought it was pink. Pink makes, pink makes me gay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got two more, and that's gonna call the wrap for tonight. After Ooh. these two. All right, y'all. T. Boudreau. We also call him Tofield. Now, little T. Boudreau attended a wedding with his mama and his papa for the first time last week. Now, taking in all the, of the proceedings, he asked his mama, why is the bride all dressed up in white? And Marie, she says, well, T, that's because white is the color of happiness. And this is the happiest day of her life. Makes sense. And T looked over. He thinks for a minute. Then he says, well, why the hell the groom all dressed in black. <laughs> that's a great question. Yeah. Oh, Lord have mercy. That's too true. Oh, my God. Can't slip nothing past them kids, y'all. Oh. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. All right, and this is going to be my last one. And it's also a Boudreaux and a Marie. Yay. So, Boudreaux. Boudreaux and Marie down at the mall doing their early Christmas shopping. And naturally, the crowd of shoppers was really big, real huge. They were standing in a crowded line at the checkout counter. And now Marie, she noticed that Boudreaux was passing admiring looks at this beautiful woman who was standing directly in front of him. Mm. And, uh, mm. After a couple of minutes, the woman turns around. She slapped the shit out of Boudreaux. Oh, She's good. yelling at him. That'll teach you not to pinch a strange woman. Ooh. Boudreaux turns and looks at Marie. He said, but Marie, I didn't pinch that lady. I promise you. Marie just smiles. She says, I know, Boudreaux. I did it for you. <laughs> <laughs> good one. I think, I think she just like to see Boudreaux get slapped, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Good one. Yay, oh, Nick. God. Good job, awesome. Way to go, Nick. Thank you. All right. All right, everybody. We'll call open mic one more time just in case somebody got a joke sticking out their back pocket that they they got to get Can off I there. I had a couple of I thought you said you had a couple extra. Well, I did a couple already. Yeah, I did them twice. Yeah, we good, y'all. It is 5.59 on my clock. Yeah, I did twice. 24 seconds. So, I'm going to wrap it up. 24 second joke. 24 second joke. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Wait a minute. No. No. I don't know any quick jokes. No, You got to do the whole joke. I can't, man. I don't have I got a dirty joke I can tell in 24 seconds. Want to hear I don't dirty think you joke? can tell anything in 24 Somebody seconds. say yes. No. no. Two pigs rolling no. in the mud. 
<laughs> Nobody, no. We, we don't want All to right, everybody. Me. Thank you for coming to the standing room. Thank you for telling us your jokes. Thank you for laughing at us. Thank you for making us laugh. And, and don't, don't forget, forget the, Thursday uh, night, match game upstairs at Hooligans Roadside. But uh, Wild K is going to be the hostess because uh, Catboy's having personal difficulties or something. So see y'all Thursday. Oh, personal difficulty. Oh, Lord.